Hey, what's up, champions? Welcome to Growth Mode. I'm your host, Donnie Bovine, and I'm the CEO and founder of Success Champions. I've spent over two decades in the sales game, learning how to grow and get better at sales, and I've spent the last three half years, uh, three half years, three and a half years, uh, learning how to build and scale Success Champion as a company. Hanging out with me, as always, is one of my favorite smart asses and knuckleheads, the sales and automation tactician, Kevin Snow. And on this episode, or on this show, Kevin says the episode part, holy fuckballs, <laughs> I can't talk today. But on this show, we talk specifically about how you can grow and scale a business. Kevin, get me to shut the hell up and tell us what we're talking about today. <laughs> hey, everyone. So today we're going to talk about how to actually ask for the sale. This is a big issue that I see when I was working with sales teams and doing some training. I'm sure you saw this too, is that they would go through this whole, this pitch. Sometimes they'd even pull out the pitch deck and and file through pages. And then they'd never ask for, they'd never actually try and close the deal. You know, I'm going to have fun with this episode because, you know. Oh, I knew you would. Follow my story. (laughs) You know, I used to work for a training organization that was heavily focused on sales. And, you know, their their philosophy when it came to selling was you don't have to ask for the clothes. You go until they give up. And, and that's how they taught sales. And to me, that just sounds fucking exhausting. Why the fuck would you go to so much ex- ex- extreme... To where somebody's like, fuck it, all right, I'll just do it. I'll just say yes, just to shut you up. Um, that's that's such a transactional move that it's just not going to last long for, for most people and their sales style. So what I want to focus on is particularly how do you get to that moment of time where two people can mutually agree that it's a good step to move forward and do something. So I'm not a big ask for the sale person as long as it's an actual sales conversation. What I think most people actually have is they have a friendly, cordial, picnic-style conversation, and both parties don't understand that there needs to be closure on the end of this conversation. So sales for me, by philosophy, is sales is a conversation with an outcome, which means you get to some sort of closure. Notice I didn't say closing, because closing stops the flow. I'm all about starting relationships, right? So, So this is about getting to closure, and it's when you don't get to closure that you come across like some sort of jackass, because, you know, Closure is you always have a next step on the calendar schedule, something to do something to move forward, or you get a yes or no. Really, really, really simple. Um, And that's where you get to. So that's where everything comes together for me is how are you having real adult conversations, person to person? Um, can you say adult in this day and age? I don't remember. I think you can say adult. That's still I think there. you can still say it, yes. <laughs> um, so I, I'm, I'm lost at what I can say and what I can't say nowadays. But, um, you know, just a real-world conversation to where you're sitting across from somebody and they understand that it's okay to say yes and it's okay to say no as the, the conversation progresses along. Well, and I think part of it is at the beginning of the meeting when when you start having this conversation with someone is that both sides don't have matching ideas of what the outcome of the meeting should be and where 
you know, what's going to be that closure for that particular conversation, whether it's deciding that, hey, we're going to keep talking some more and, and move to the next step of the relationship building, or that we're going to decide it's not a fit. There's no understanding that that needs to happen. Yeah, for sure. You know, I was looking back on a couple of the old episodes and, you know, a lot of this comes down to what we talked about in episode six, how to stay consistent with lead generation and, and the likes. It's everything has to be a, and you're going to love this, a similar process from how you start the conversation. Um, and obviously I'm boring, Kevin, uh, how you start the conversation, <laughs> how you, you know, um, you know, finish the conversation, all that needs to be a similar process. I can't say that word, uh, you know, a typical same style of process. So, you know, often uh, every conversation, I like to take control of the conversation. You know, I don't care. If Shocking. I, meet... <laughs> True. <laughs> I, I don't care if I, if, uh, if I have spoken to you a hundred times or it's the first time we met, I'm usually just going to grab the reins and say, okay, let's do this. I don't know much about you. You don't know much about me. So why don't you tell me your story? Tell me your world. I'll tell you mine and we'll see what turns up. And I find that's just a fun way to start off all the conversations. And people seem to relax pretty quickly um, to go into a more normalized, non-sales-like conversation. And, you know, if it's a more stringent corporate style of sale, my move only changes to one point, And I think closure starts at the beginning of the meeting to Kevin's point. And it's going to sound like, Hey, you know, uh, you don't know much about me. I don't know much about you. What makes this a great meeting for you today? What do we need to accomplish and get out of here and knowing, um, so we can figure out whether we should move forward with something or not. And they'll tell you, I think it's the years of exposure to really horrible corporate sales strategy mm. that set up that expectation of of the buyers, of prospects, of when a salesperson comes in the room that they're going to get talked to. They're not going to have a conversation. And that's why your technique of, I don't know anything about you, you don't know anything about me, let's get to know each other and figure out where we go, is really refreshing for them and it gives them that ability to go we can but just Kevin, talk. i can see all the technical people going <laughs> I, I i can't tell a company that i don't know anything about them i should know every intricate detail about that company and i should know every you know point of their company how many servers they have how many computers users um and most of your high c technical type of people they can't just have this gentle, free-flowing conversation. You know, I, I've seen you've learned to do it, um, but it's not typically well, how you would have. No, and I and how I learned to do it was actually through structure. I developed for me at all my different sales uh, companies and positions a initial meeting guide that I use that said, "Hey, here are the things I need to talk about. Here are the types of questions I need to ask." And it, it, when I started using it years and years ago, I was pretty stringent of, I, all right, I walked through just top to bottom. Here's the questions. It was like I was doing a goddamn interview for a newspaper with this person. <laughs> but I learned my questioning and I learned how to then flow the conversation. So if a conversation we started talking about something and this question that we should, would normally come later fits, we're going to ask it. We're going to we're going to keep going in that conversation piece. But the goal was for me was to get rid of the stringent corporate binder sales pitch of and our company was formed 1985 <laughs> and get into that conversation of, hey, I want to know about your business. I, you know, I know what's on your website, but I don't know a lot of the intricate de details that I would love to know to be able to tell you if we're a good fit. So it was building that ability to question and just do, using questions for the sales calls as opposed to, you know, wanting to jump in and tell about all the cool bells and whistles features, which is the other thing that we like to do is go into detail. So. Yeah, for sure. 
You know, I, I think, you know, when you're talking about asking for the sale, it's... It, I don't think there's ever a time where you're like, all right, do you want to sign up? <laughs> you know, uh, <coughs> I, I think closing the sale is a, a old school, old world mentality that's just cold in nature. There shouldn't well, be a cold. Go ahead. No, and and, they, and that's all those old tactics. Like, well, if you were going to buy this, would you rather get it in blue or red? <laughs> Um, or you better buy today because the price goes up tomorrow. You know, I, uh, I hate all that stupid yeah. shit, and, and because it's just inauthentic, it's it's not a real conversation. It's a tactic. Sales shouldn't be a tactic. You know, it shouldn't be a maneuver or ma- manipulation. It should be a conversation. I mean, look, are you ever going to look at your mom and go? Um, well, you better buy today, Mom, because its price goes up tomorrow. Fuck no, you're never going to say that to her. And and sales should work the same way. The only difference being from that conversation from with your mom and prospect is you're getting the closure. right? You know you're going to see your mom again. right? It's not like you're never going to run into her. But with a prospect, <laughs> you never know if you're going to fucking see him again. So, so it's really simple of let's get to closure. The only closing maneuver I have in my arsenal is what should we do next? That's the phrase I'll use. And when you say what should we do next, you're going to be blown away by the number of times they say, okay, well, let's get started. All right, let's do that. You know, and, and it's funny to me to watch... Um, how many people want to do business once you just have that natural flowing conversation? Yeah, that's how all my sales are now with companies. It's finding out what's going on in the world and asking them, you know, where, where, and I know you don't like this term, but where their pain points are, you know, what is bothering them, what's keeping them up at night and having conversations about those impacts and what's, what it's doing to their business and then being able to show them how they can fix it. And then just asking that question, all right, so what, what's next? And the, invariably, they're like, well, let's get started. How do, how do we get going? Like, sweet, this is what we do. See, I think you don't necessarily focus on the pain points. I think you understand where they want to go. And then I think you've gotten really good at asking the questions to help them understand that by doing this, this, and this they can figure out that you're the guy to take them down the path to to get them there. Um, and, you know, I, shit. Uh, when talking about sales, closing is such a phrase that I can't even get it out of my own damn head. So I'll say closing, not even meaning to, because that word drives me nuts. But I remember, you know, the other day, Kevin reached out. He goes, I finally did it. And I said, did what? He goes, I did a one-call close. Right, I'm like fucking badass, dude. I mean, to me that I, I think everybody uh, almost. I mean, there, there's definitely some outliers, but everybody can get to a one call close. You know, I don't care how fucking technical you get. I mean, yeah, there's some things, but if you know your shit, you know, get the deal done by having a real conversation and get a commitment to move forward, um, and watch what happens in your your business. So. Um, last I, yeah, I think one of the things you said is, is really key, and that's getting them to verbalize and come up with what it's going to mean for their business to do something and to go a certain way. I think too often salespeople try and use that as their clothes and try and put words into their their customer's mouth as opposed to just asking them questions that's going to get them to say things that that because they said it, it's naturally going to resonate with them. Yes. Yeah. No one no one says something that says, "Well, that's not true." You just said it. It must be true. It came out of your mouth, not mine right. as a salesperson. <laughs> so I think that's really key. And that's one of the powers of doing the whole questioning piece is they get to form. You get to help them formulate a conclusion. Yeah. And, you know, if you focus so much on that conversation, working on making sure they're enjoying the conversation as much as you are, that you both walk away feeling like that's a phenomenal fucking conversation 
then that sales call will be magical. It, it's it's so cool when you get to the end of a sales call and somebody goes, man, I'm so glad we had this conversation today. That's when you know you're doing it right. Because even if they don't become a client and you provide them with enough value that they can walk away as a better person or they're doing something more, that's a fucking win, man. And, yeah. and that that's how it should be. So it's not about asking for the sale. It's about understanding their world, providing them real value, teaching them something, and leaving them better than you freaking found them. And odds are you do that enough times, and things are going to move forward. But here's one caveat to all this, guys, is if you're doing a lot of this and it's not leaving, leading to any sort of business, ask for the sale. Ask them to do business with you. So you can hear what fucking objections they actually are fixing to throw at you. And now you understand what questions you need to be asking earlier in the sales process. So you're not fucking it up and having to need to ask for the sale on the back end. And I think that's where the final magic lays. The best salespeople in the world have the ability to ask badass questions. And it's those badass questions that determine the outcome of every sales call. So, as always, guys, if you get any value out of this episode, this show whatsoever, do us a favor and teach somebody else how to follow and subscribe. It means absolutely everything for us. I appreciate you. Stay out of trouble, and we'll catch you next time.